Hi folks, HR Funk here with a brand new pistol to review. This is the FN Model 509 9mm semi-automatic pistol. And I'm going to be taking a look at the features and characteristics of this new pistol here in the shop. And then I'll head off to the range and we'll see how it performs. Now some of you may already be acquainted with the relatively brief history of the Model 509. FN submitted an entry into last year's U.S. Army Modular Handgun System competition that was very similar to this pistol, and when that was not selected by the Army to replace the M9, FN tweaked the design and released it to the law enforcement and defensive shooting community as the Model 509. The 509 has a lot of features that we've come to expect with the polymer framed pistols that have come into widespread use in the last few years. And I'm going to start at the top and work my way down, beginning with the sights. FN sights are metal. They are not plastic. So those of you that dislike plastic sights, rest assured you have metal sights on the 509. They have a very squared off profile for one-handed manipulation of the slide for reloading and charging the pistol. The sights also, on this particular model, are not tritium night sights, although tritium night sights are an option for the law enforcement model. This is the civilian version of the Model 509. But this particular version has the three-dot system with luminescent paint. So when they are exposed to light, the sights charge, if you will. And then when you go into a darkened environment, they do glow for a period of time. I'm going to go ahead and darken the lights here in the shop and we'll see just how much luminescence we get from these sights in this darkened environment. And here are the night sights, or I should say the luminescent sights on the 509. I've not made it completely pitch dark here in the shop, but it is darkened and those sights are quite easy to see. Moving on from the sights to the slide of the 509, the slide is constructed of stainless steel and it's finished with a nitro carburizing process that, as I understand it, makes the outside of the slide very resistant to abrasions and rust and corrosion. It also has very deep fore and aft cocking serrations that are easy to grip. And by the way, the pistol is empty, completely unloaded. The barrel is stainless steel and it features a recessed muzzle crown to help with accuracy and also help to protect that crown of the barrel from possible damage. The 509 is a striker fired pistol and it has a consistent double action only style trigger that according to FN is supposed to break between five and a half and seven and a half pounds and this one feels pretty good. I'd say that's probably on the lighter end of that. And we'll check that in a couple of minutes on the Lyman trigger pull scale and see exactly where that trigger is breaking. The 509 is very ambidextrous. You'll notice that there is a slide stop on both sides that can both lock the slide open and if you want to release the slide you can release it with either side. It also has ambidextrous magazine releases. And these are interesting because the magazine release does not have to be taken out and reversed like some pistols, but actually either side that you push will release the magazine. The magazines, by the way, are 17 shot magazines and they have witness holes in the back so that you can tell exactly how much ammunition you have loaded at any given time. The 509 has a 1913 standard Picatinny rail at the front for attaching lights and lasers and such. The grip of the 509 is very interesting. It actually features four different textures around the circumference of the grip. Starting at the top, right here on both sides, we have a skateboard tape-like texture. Moving down, we have the small diamond checkering style pattern on the grip itself or on the sides of the grip. And if you look closely, you'll notice the serrations on the rear and the front of the grip are slightly different. On the front, these are little 
squares, I'll say, for lack of a different or better description. And on the back, it's a little different style of serration. So a lot of time and design work went into the grip on this pistol, and it feels very good. Now the grip does have a replaceable back strap. I have the arched back strap on here currently, and it can be switched out for a smaller one that has a straighter profile. And there is a larger one available from FN that actually is bigger in the back and wraps around underneath the grip at the top to give you a little bit more to hold on to if you have larger hands. So again, a lot of time and thought went into designing the grip of the 509. Disassembly of the 509 follows the fairly typical pattern. First off, once again, we'll lock it to the rear and make sure that it is unloaded. Next, we rotate the takedown lever forward 90 degrees, just like that. Now we release the slide, and as it comes forward, press the trigger, and the slide and barrel assembly and recoil spring assembly come right off the frame. At this point, you can remove the recoil spring, and the 509 does have a dual recoil spring system to give you a long spring life. And we can also remove the barrel for cleaning. By the way, the stainless steel barrel is cold hammer forged, again to give long barrel life. Everything about the 509 is intended to make it last a long time under adverse conditions. Everything from the finish on the slide to the cold hammer forged barrel to the dual recoil spring, everything again is intended to make these things last a long, long time. By the way, while I have the barrel removed, I can show you that it does come from the factory with a polished feed ramp. That's a nice touch to improve functional reliability. When we reassemble the 509, it's in reverse order. Barrel goes in first. Recoil spring assembly next. Slide the slide onto the frame. Rotate the takedown lever back up. And the pistol is reassembled just that fast. According to FN, the 509 has an overall length of 7.4 inches, a height of 5.56 inches, and a thickness or a width of 1.35 inches. Now I should point out that width really is right here at the ambidextrous slide stop, which does project just a little bit from the sides of the frame and slide. Other than that, the pistol is a little bit slimmer. The pistol weighs 26.9 ounces unloaded, and the barrel length is 4 inches. And it's time to test the trigger on the 509 with my Lyman trigger pull scale, and we'll see exactly where it's breaking. A little heavier than I thought it was going to be. 6 pounds, 13 ounces. Let's try one more. Six pounds, nine ounces that time. So it's weighing or measuring heavier than it feels. I really thought it was gonna be closer to the five and a half pound part of FN's trigger pull weight spectrum. The trigger is an articulated trigger, similar to the Smith & Wesson M&P. The bottom half of the trigger does articulate to move a drop safety out of the way before the trigger can fire. It does have a striker block safety. That drop safety as well as at least two more passive safeties inside of here to ensure that the pistol will only fire when the trigger is pulled all the way to the rear. The 509 according to FN ostensibly has a loaded chamber indicator and it's built into the external extractor and if you'll notice currently the rear portion of the extractor is flush with the side of the slide and there's no coloration of any kind that can be seen. When a round is loaded into the chamber, and this is a dummy round by the way, the rear of the extractor 
rotates in slightly and if you look very closely you can see a sliver of red paint there I'm gonna to try to reposition my light a little bit and see if you can see that better just a little bit of red paint right there and also the rear portion of the extractor is now rotated slightly inward and if you feel very carefully you can feel that and that is the loaded chamber indicator on the 509 I've seen this kind of system before and I have to tell you it's not very effective that's probably the one part of this design or the one part of this pistol's design rather that I think was not very well thought out and could have been done much better. FN boasts that over a million rounds were fired during the development of the Model 509. And in the end, I think they came up with a very business-like, no-frills, 9mm service pistol. I'll be very interested to see how the 509 performs when we get out to the range. And in fact, I don't see any reason to delay that any longer. So let's head out there now and see how it does. And as you can see, we've arrived out on the range to put the Model 509 through its paces. What I'm going to do in a couple of minutes is start through my standard handgun testing battery. I'll start out with an accuracy test from 30 feet, then I'll move into some more defensive drills, and before it's all said and done, we'll give the Model 509 a good ringing out and see how it performs. The ammunition for today's test are going to be two different kinds of 115 grain full metal jacket ammunition. I've got some Browning FMJs and also some blazer brass. And I'm set up and ready for that first 30 foot accuracy drill with the 509. Let's see how it does. Okay, not bad accuracy, but definitely hitting a little bit off to the left. And looking at the sight, both the front and the rear sight look like they're pretty well centered. So I'll keep an eye on that and see if this is just me getting acquainted with the pistol, or if I'm going to need to drift that rear sight a little bit just to bring my point of impact in line with my point of aim. And I'm set up and ready for the 50 foot drill now, folks. One thing that I've noticed in shooting the 509 that I did not notice in the shop is there's a definite staginess to the trigger as I'm squeezing it. When I squeeze the trigger, it comes back and stops. Right there, it has hit a stop. And then as I squeeze beyond that, there's some definite creep, and it makes it kind of indistinguishable exactly when that trigger is going to break. There it stops, and then I'm press, press, press. That time, I didn't feel any creep. There, definitely creep, 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 and then the striker releases. So we'll see if that works itself out as I shoot the 509, or if that's just going to be a characteristic of this trigger. And here we go with the 50-foot accuracy drill. I've got the human silhouette target set up down there. I'm going to be firing 10 rounds, and we'll see how the 509 does from here. And all 10 of the shots stayed in the chest area. The group is a little bigger than I'd like to see. And again, that trigger continues to kind of throw me off a little bit. You might have noticed there toward the end, shot number seven or eight, somewhere around there, went off pretty quickly. I wasn't ready for that. And it was because I had gotten used to where I thought the trigger was breaking. And all of a sudden, as I started to apply pressure that time, 
all of a sudden the trigger went when I wasn't expecting it to. Now it stayed in with the rest of the group, but again, that's concerning me just a little bit as I shoot the 509, and I'm hoping that that works out as I shoot it more. All right, folks, I'm gonna try some failure drills from 20 feet. I'll be firing two shots to the body, one shot to the head in rapid succession. And I wanna see here with this faster trigger manipulation, if I'm still noticing that kind of quirkiness from the trigger, or if I don't notice it so much when I speed up the shot tempo. And even at the faster shot tempo, I'm noticing that trigger just a little bit. I managed to pull one shot off the shoulder there. The other two were in the head. Everything that was going toward the body stayed in the body, but I definitely blew that one. All right, it's time for a multiple adversary drill. I can put one round in the target on the right, three rounds in the target on the left, and then two more shots in the target on the right. And we'll see how this goes. Hopefully I'm not gonna keep seeing that weird influence from the trigger. And that felt a little bit better. At least all the shots stayed where they were supposed to. These are a little bit farther off to the left than I would like them to see. The shots on this target were all good. And maybe I'm just starting to get used to that trigger a little bit. I'm not sure. Okay, folks, as you can see, the water bottle Desperados are back again. We'll try the 509 against them and we'll see how it does against a real challenge. And I managed to defeat the Desperados with the 509, but it was not nearly as decisive a victory as some of the past ones have been. Here we go, folks. We're going to find out if the 509 is a 20-foot tack driver. I've got three rounds loaded into the magazine, the thumbtack is on the target, and we'll see how it does. Well, it is a tack driver. Folks, as long as I'm set up at 20 feet, I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to reshoot that 20 foot failure drill with the two shots to the body and one shot to the head. Now that I've gotten a little bit more accustomed to this trigger and just see if I can shoot it any better than I did the first time. Okay, all nine shots stayed on the target that time, but as you notice, the shot tempo was slower. I'm actually having to concentrate on my sights and my trigger press to make sure, and I almost pulled that first one off, uh, to make sure that they stay on the target. So it's not as instinctive as a lot of the other pistols that I've fired. All right, folks, I'm gonna stay out here and do a little bit more shooting with the 509, then I'll head back to the shop for some final thoughts. And here we are back in the shop, folks. And I've got to tell you, the ending that I'm about to record to this video is not at all the ending that I expected to be recording. I expected that when I finished shooting the 509, I was going to come back and tell you how well it performed and how much I liked shooting it. And there are a lot of things about it that I do like. I like how well it points. I like the luminescent sights. I like the ambidextrous nature of the pistol. But the thing that I really don't like is the trigger and that trigger really detracts from the entire shooting experience. The trigger I could best describe as stagey and inconsistent, and really when I shoot it, I have to very much concentrate on my sights and on my trigger squeeze to make sure I fire accurate shots. And in a defensive pistol, I don't want to concentrate that much. I want to obtain a flash sight picture, press the trigger, and have the bullet strike reasonably close to where I'm aiming. Just as when I was shooting at the water bottle Desperados, I shot probably five or six shots at those particular Desperados before I got all three of them, and those weren't even really good hits. And normally, I don't have nearly that much trouble. If you've seen my other videos, you know that 
I typically get them a lot quicker and easier than that. But with the 509, largely because of that trigger, I did have that problem. Now, I don't think there's a problem with the mechanical accuracy of the 509. And when I really concentrate on my sights and on my trigger squeeze, just like with the thumbtack shot, I hit that the first time. So there's not really any, any inherent problem with the mechanical accuracy of the pistol. It's all in that trigger squeeze when you're trying to do it quickly and get accurate shots on target. So in the end, unfortunately, I really don't think I can recommend the 509 for purchase. Now it could be that I just got a lemon and FN is a very reputable manufacturer. Maybe if I got a hold of them and sent the pistol back, they could do something. Um, and maybe with enough shooting, if I put several hundred more rounds through it, that trigger would even out and some of that staginess and inconsistency would go away. But I don't know that I'm gonna have it that long. I have too many other pistols that I'm able to shoot well that I don't think I'm going to keep this one around just in the hopes that it's going to work itself out. Now one positive comment I should make before I go is on the reliability of the pistol. I shot about a hundred rounds through this pistol out at the range and it ran through them without a hitch and that was even without being lubed. I intended to lube and clean this pistol before I took it out to the range and I forgot. Even so it ran through those hundred rounds without any problem whatsoever. So it's a very reliable pistol at least as far as I can determine through 100 rounds worth of shooting. But again, my big complaint about it is the lack of practical accuracy because of that poor trigger. So that's my review on the 509. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, share those with me. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. If you are a subscriber, make sure you hit that bell icon up at the top of the screen, and that way you'll get updates whenever I post a new video and you'll know that there's something new up there to watch. So once again, thanks for watching my video review of the 509. I hope you enjoyed it, and until next time, good shooting. Bye-bye.